Well, here we are at the Great American Race, the Daytona 500, the NASCAR Winston Cup Series premier event. This is Joe Moore, and I'm with Barney Hall to bring you live flag-to-flag -flag coverage on MRN. To win a race is something pretty special at any track. But to win here at Daytona, you're that much closer to becoming a legend in the sport. Well, you're right. To have your name mentioned as a former winner here at Daytona puts you on a list with some drivers that these guys have admired since they were kids. Sterling Marlin picked up Rookie of the Year honors in 1983, but it took him over 10 years to find his way to victory lane. But he made it there in impressive fashion. If you have to wait that long to pick up a win, you might as well make it a big one. And Sterling did with a win in the 1994 Daytona 500. Ken Schrader has earned over 20 pole positions during his NASCAR career. Schrader's always been pretty good in qualifying, especially in the late 80s and early 90s. In 1993, he started 8 of 30 races from the front row, and when you're not working your way through traffic, a good finish is a lot easier. For the land of the free and the home of the Everybody and welcome back to NASCAR Thunder 2003. It is race one of 2003, the Daytona 500. Let's take a look at who this mystery driver is on the front row alongside Rusty Wallace getting the pole outside pole in their debut. S. Hammonds, whoever that is. But Steve Park and the number 49 of Jeff Purvis will be behind them. It's a whole new season. And it is underway, green flag, in the Daytona 500. As we have with every race in Speed Week so far, we struggle with getting up through the gears. The hope is we can latch on to somebody to hopefully pull us back up to the top 10 in front of us. If you did miss the last episode, that explained all of the changes for this season, as well as had the Budweiser shootout qualifying and our Gatorade dual race, so be sure to check that out if you did miss it. Looks like Rusty Wallace may not lead the first lap of the season. It may go to Jeff Purvis in that number 49 car. Has had a really impressive speed week so far in that number 49 Bam Dodge. As we come across the line for lap number one of the season to be complete. And Dale Jr. now looking to the inside for the lead. As we continue to hold off Jeff Green and Michael Waltrip for the time being. Well, apparently Michael Waltrip and the rest of the pack decided they didn't want to come with me. But Jeff Gordon, I thought he started relatively far back. But he has stormed his way through the pack so far. And in his 4th of July car, for some reason has worked his way up towards the front here. He's now behind us as that lead pack continues to get further and further away thanks to Mikey and company deciding to not work with us here as they start to work their way back up towards us now. Got Mark Martin alongside him there. It looks like we have the seven car up ahead and that might be the 16. This is a 20 lap race, the Daytona 500. We will have to make a pit stop. Um, I don't think I had mentioned it, but the rules are the same from last season. We are on the veteran difficulty, which is really good for, you know, when we have a crap car. But it will have upgrades in just a couple races time. As I mentioned in the last video, three races until we have a new engine that will have those new and improved parts in it. As, yes, we are catching the seven here. Hey, a top, if we could just pass him, that will put us in the top ten, and I wouldn't be upset with a top ten to start off our season here. Get underneath the seven of Casey Atwood here. Mark Martin's gonna go ahead, follow us underneath him. Along with Jimmy Johnson. Car's a little tight right now. You might be able to see as we get into the corner, it has a little bit of tightness to it. So I might loosen it up just a tad here when we do get to our pit stop. Mark Martin has just about dropped off the face of the earth and once again took a lot of the pack with him. So right now it's just Jimmy Johnson and a struggling Kevin Harvick. I'm well, not struggling, but a straggler as into the group of us as the pack starts to form up again to try to catch up. 
And that is actually Steve Park up ahead of us in the Pennzoil Chevy. He finished second in the dual race with us and actually blew up as we crossed the line. So in real life, pretty sh I don't know if that would have been a penalty back in 2003. Because I don't quite remember how the Speed Weeks rule package worked when you were allowed to change the engine. It's changed so much over time. But the pack is formed up behind us once again. And we are slowly making our way towards the halfway mark here in this race. All right, lap seven looks like some cars are starting to come down pit road now. We'll see how spread out the pit stops are or if everybody starts to come down the lap after or so. We're gonna try to pit with a ton of cars here simply because we struggle to get up to speed in the draft here. So we need to try to have a good stop and get out in front of people. You can see Kevin Harvick got in front of us, and I can't even keep up with him. He's just able to drive away, which is really weird. I understand we don't have 100% engine, and it's not an upgrade engine, but I didn't think it would cause this much of a difference to us. The way Steve Park got down low there makes me think he might be coming in this time. Nope, he's going to go ahead, stay out. We have anyone coming. Doesn't look like any takers this time by, so it might be another lap or two before we see others come in. Try to hold up Michael Waltrip and Jeff Gordon here as they're still side by side behind us here. Kevin Harvick has made his way up to Steve Park and is trying to get around him, but having a little bit of difficulty doing so. So go up to block Michael Waltrip because it's just apparently we have to hold him behind us if we want to uh, stay ahead. Cars are jockeying for position behind us, but they may also be getting ready to come down pit road this time. It's the halfway point now here in the Daytona 500, and it looks like pit stops are back underway. And with the guy in front and behind us pitting, we're going to go ahead and come down. For fuck's sake! Son of a bitch. I don't understand how they're able to break so much later than me and get down to pit road speed. So I tried getting in a little faster and that clearly uh, didn't work. But luckily we only took two tires. This is the 55, I could tell he wasn't gonna slow down. Luckily we only took two tires so we didn't all in all lose that much time. But it still sucks it happened because we could have gotten in front of them. But now we'll just have to deal with these guys behind us. So our first penalty of the season coming in race number one. Who'd have thunk it? We've got the outside pole sitter now behind us. So it seems like his uh, time at the front was very short-lived as we've got some cars exiting the pit lane now. Actually, the 170 might possibly be leading because we've got a blue dot right behind us. It might be possible he hasn't pit yet or has actually gotten way out in front. I'm not sure. So one of these cars behind me is the leader. I mean, we're only in 23rd position, so it's a little weird that the leader would be this close. But as that 170 drops way to the yellow line there on the back straightaway, I'm thinking he is leading but has not come down pit road yet. We'll see as we come out of turn four. If so, he stretched it a really long time. And yes, that is the leader, actually. So he got himself some five bonus points in his first ever NASCAR Winston Cup Series race. Good for him. Well, unlike the real 2003 Daytona 500, this one does run to its conclusion. Leader comes across the line. They're somewhere in that pack behind us. They win the Daytona 500 and nothing has happened here, which is why you're just now rejoining me, probably, unless I cut in some footage of me just defending because that is literally all I've been doing for about the last five laps or so 
And I was going to say, I don't think anybody's even blown an engine in this race. I did see a blown engine up ahead in turn three. So we may pick up P21 here as long as we do hold off Ken Schrader and Texas Terry Labonte behind us. We get a look at who this car is that has blown up. And it is Tony Stewart. He's going to blow up right before the uh, finish. Coming across the line, going to be P21 in our second Daytona 500. Overall, not too bad with how bad our engine was. But Dale Jarrett, champion, and now Daytona 500 winner again. The yellow flag didn't fly at all in this one. You know, that's pretty amazing. It says a lot about the quality and true talent of these NASCAR Winston Cup drivers. The Coca-Cola car never even got a scratch in this race. Well, it's going to be a happy crew when they get back to the shop. They can immediately go to work on next week's car without having to worry about fixing anything from this race, and that makes for a much less stressful atmosphere. We hope you enjoyed today's broadcast of NASCAR Winston Cup Racing on the voice of NASCAR, MRN. Next up is North Carolina. So with that, that means just two more races until our chassis upgrade is done on the car. Taking a look at the engine, we do have a repaired engine now. Let's go ahead, set repair on another. What is our lowest one? Gonna be this one right here, get that done. And we'll have a new engine in two races as well. We're only gonna repair our chassis right now simply because we do have an upgrade coming in a few races, so no point in building a new one. So this does put us in a similar situation. We can either do a new engine now or we can do the new engine for the next race. Considering the rock is next, it's not a high horsepower track. Uh, we're gonna save this new engine for Vegas, which is the race after, and then we'll have our upgrade. So we will put our best engine in the car for the rock, but we will not have a hundred engine for it. That'll do it for this episode, North Carolina Speedway. The rock is up next. If you like this video, leave a like, subscribe for more episodes and more content, and I will see you next time. Bye.